एवरी वन वेलकम टू बॉटनी इन साइडर सो इन दिस लेक्चर वील बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट वन ऑफ द टॉपिक फ्रॉम यूनिट ट्वेल्व एंड दैट इज बायो रेमिडिएशन एंड फाइटो रेमिडिएशन सो लेट्स डिस्कस अबाउट ईच वन ऑफ दैम वन बाय वन सो इफ वी टॉक अबाउट बायो रेमिडिएशन फर्स्ट सो लेट्स जस्ट ब्रेक द टर्म इन टू टू इन ऑर्डर टू अंडरस्टैंड इट मीनिंग सो बायो रेमिडिएशन इज मेड अप ऑफ टू वर्ड्स दैट इज बायो एंड रेमिडिएशन सो बायो मीन्स बायोलॉजिकल एंड रेमिडिए Remediation means the solution. So, in simple words, bio remediation could be called as a process, or it could be called as a biological process in which we are finding out some solutions to the problem that are occurring in any particular area. So, what is our aim is that we need to convert the more toxic substance into a less toxic substance. or in other words what we can say is that we are actually aiming to convert any area or any particular type into a less toxic into a less harmful area so this is what happens in bio remediation so it could also be given the name of bio treatment bio reclamation bio restoration or bio transformation transformation means we are changing something restoration means we are trying to get back to the normal changed environment reclamation means the same and bio treatment means that when we are using some biological components in order to to treat any particular area in particular so this is what is bio remediation and because it is biological we are using some of the biological organisms or one thing or the other which is related to biology hence it is given the name of bio remediation so we can say that bio remediation it is the branch of biotechnology that employs the use of the living organisms like the microbes the bacteria in the removal of the contaminants pollutants or the toxins from the soil water and other environment so as we have discussed consider we have this soil and the soil is very contaminated in nature so when we are using microbes bacteria in order to remove the contaminants and the pollutants from this particular area in order to restore its earlier healthy phase that is what is called as bio remediation it is used to clean up the oil spills or the contaminated ground waters the use of either naturally occurring or deliberately introduced microorganisms to consume and break down the environmental pollutants in order to clean a polluted site in simple word what we are doing is we are cleaning up the mess created in a particular area and that area could contain soil water and other environments in particular bioremediation is a process that is used to treat the contaminated media including the water soil and the subsurface materials by altering the environmental conditions to stimulate the growth of the microorganisms and degrade the target pollutants what we are actually doing is we are targeting any particular pollutants by the help of the microorganisms we are introducing some microorganisms to this polluted environment and this microorganisms help to degrade the pollutants they help to degrade the actual source of the pollution biological treatment that is bio remediation is a similar approach that is used to treat the waste including the waste water industrial waste and the soil water we are just cleaning up a particular environment bio remediation is the use of the microbial species to clean up the soil and the ground water that have been contaminated by the discharged chemicals engineered bio remediation is the acceleration of the microbial activities using engineered site modification procedures such as the installments of the wells to circulate the fluids it uses microorganisms to reduce the pollution through the biological degradation of the pollutants into the non toxic substance so let's talk about the triple corner once the so same question have been asked in the previous years so make sure you remember about this so as we can see all three of them that is the pollutant the environment and the organisms are directly impacting the other two components if the organism is in healthy state it would be able to degrade the pollutant 
and it would lead to the physiological environment to be in a better state if the environment is at a better state it would not let the pollutants grow and it would positively benefit the organisms if the pollutants is high in number what would happen is it would contaminate the environment and also directly it would be contaminating the organisms by negatively impacting their health so these are the three important components of any particular area directly impacting each other so let's talk about the types of bioremediation so there are mainly two bases on which we divide the type of bioremediation the first one is on the basis of location and the second one is based upon the mechanism so if we talk about on the basis of location so it could either be in situ or ex situ talking about based upon the mechanism it could either be bio stimulation or bio augmentation let's discuss about each one of them so let's talk about the in situ bioremediation first so in situ bioremediation is a direct approach for having any particular area cleaned up bioremediation at the site of the pollution applied for the cleaning up of the oil spillage beaches etc what happens is in situ in the name itself it carries its meaning in means where the pollution is actually occurring we are treating the particular area in field itself so bioremediation at the site of the pollution so when we clean up the oil spillages or the beaches we are actually having the in situ remediation and in situ remediation could either be intrinsic or could either be engineered that is either we could intrinsically clean the in situ areas or we can use some engineering methods or we can use some technology in order to clean up that particular environment talking about the ex situ remediation so in this type what we have is that there occurs remediation other than the native place of the pollution so ex situ means outside the place of the pollution that is the toxic or the waste material collected from the polluted site so if we have a polluted site and, and we want to treat the waste and the toxic material present here what we would be doing is would be transporting this waste material from the site to any other location it could be a factory or any particular design place in order to treat this particular waste so the waste is is carried at a designed place and this ex situ remediation could either be aerobic anaerobic or sequential depending upon which type of material we are actually treating so let's talk about the bio stimulation that is the type of bio remediation depending upon the mechanism we are using for the bio remediation so the bio stimulation involves the modification of the environment to stimulate the existing bacteria that are capable of the bio remediation this could be done by the addition of the various forms of rate of the limiting nutrients and the electron acceptors such as phosphorus nitrogen oxygen and carbon so what we are actually doing in bio stimulation is we are modifying any particular environment in order to stimulate the bacteria which is already present in this particular area in order to stimulate its growth and as a result of the stimulation what would happen is that the bacteria would start to increase in number and as a result the goal of the bio remediation would be complete so bio stimulation in the word itself carries its meaning so when we are stimulating the growth of the biological component that is the microbe or any other microorganism present in that particular area in order to stimulate its growth and as a result in order to stimulate the bio remediation process 
द लास्ट वन इज द बायो ऑग्यूमेंटेशन सो बायो ऑग्यूमेंटेशन इज द अडिशन ऑफ आर्किया और द बैक्टीरियल कल्चर दैट आर रिक्वायर्ड टू स्पीड अप द रेट ऑफ डिग्रेडेशन ऑफ द कंटेमिनेट द ऑर्गेनिजम्स दैट ओरिजिनेट फ्रॉम द कंटेमिनेटेड एरियाज मे ऑलरेडी बी कैपेबल और मे ऑलरेडी बी एबल टू ब्रेक डाउन द वेस्ट बट पर हैप्स इन एफिशेंटली और स्लोली so in bio augmentation what we are doing is we are adding any external stimulant in the particular area in order to speed up the rate of degradation one important point to remember is that in bio augmentation there are already microbes present and they are doing their work but that work is either very slow or it is inefficient hence in order to increase the efficiency of the microbes present in order to increase the rate at which this particular work is happening what happens is we are adding some kind of bacterial culture in order to stimulate the speed of the particular process that is happening in this area in bio stimulation we stimulated the existing bacteria and in bio augmentation we are adding the bacterial culture to the particular area in order to speed up the particular process both of them are almost similar there is only one single difference in bio stimulation we are stimulating the existing bacteria and in bio augmentation we are speeding up the rate by adding any external bacterial culture and also second important difference is in bio stimulation the work starts after the stimulation of the microbes and in bio augmentation the work is already occurring in that area but that work is inefficient and slow so these are the two important processes and their differences as well so now let's discuss about the second sub topic that is phyto remediation so as in bio remediation we are using microbes as our helping hand in the same way in phyto remediation we are using phyto that is we are using plants in order to remove the contaminants in order to destroy the contaminants in a particular area in both bio remediation and phyto remediation the final result or the final task is to reduce the contamination the only difference lies in the agent that are being used in case of bio remediation we are using microbes and in case of phyto remediation we are using the plants so phyto remediation is a bio remediation process itself that uses various types of plants to remove transfer stabilize and or to destroy the contaminants in the soil and the ground water so this is the only difference between the two there are various different types of the phyto remediation mechanisms let's discuss about each one of them so the first one is the rhizosphere biodegradation so in this process the plant releases the natural substances through its roots supplying the nutrients to the microorganisms in the soil the microorganisms enhance the biological degradation so in rhizosphere biodegradation what is actually happening is that the plant is releasing the natural substances through its root and it is supplying the nutrients to the microorganisms the microorganism enhances the biological degradation the second one is the phyto stabilization so in this process the chemical compounds produced by the plant immobilizes the contaminants rather than degrade them in phyto stabilization what is happening is that the chemical that is produced by the plant leads to the immobilization of the contaminant but there does not occur any degradation the third one is the phyto accumulation so it is also called as phyto extraction so in this process what happens is that the plant roots absorb the contaminants along with the other nutrients and the water the contaminant mass is not destroyed but it ends up in the plant shoots and the leaves this method is primarily used for the waste containing the metals 
in phyto accumulation as the name suggests there is occurring accumulation of the waste toxic substance into the plant shoots and the leaves and this method is mainly used for removing the waste from the metals the fourth one is the hydroponic system for the treating of water streams that is rhizofiltration so it is almost similar to the phyto accumulation but in this what happens is that the plant used for the clean up are raised in the greenhouse with their roots in water the only difference between the phyto accumulation and the hydroponic system is that in case of the hydroponic system what happens is that the plant that is being used for the cleaning up purpose grown up in the greenhouses with their roots in the water the fifth one is phytovolatization so in this process what happens is that the plants take up the water containing the organic contaminants and they release the contaminants into the air through their leaves the next one is phyto degradation in this what happens is that the plant actually metabolizes and destroy the contaminants within the plant tissue so in this one what happens is that in this the plants is taking up the water that contain the organic contaminants and it accumulates it into its leaves and it releases it out into the air in the sixth one we have phyto degradation so in this the plant actually metabolizes and destroy the contaminants within the plant tissue so in this what is happening is that the plant is metabolizing and destroying the contaminants into the plant tissues the last one is the hydraulic control so in this what happens is that the trees indirectly remediate by controlling the ground water movement trees act as a natural pump when their roots reach down towards the water table and establish a dense root mass that makes up the large quantities of water so you can just read out the same and you'll be able to understand so these were the seven main important different mechanism that are used in the phyto remediation so let's just quickly discuss this particular flow chart so in bio remediation what is happening is that there occurs clean up of the pollutants by the living organisms in phyto remediation what happens is that there occurs remediation or the clearing of the pollutants using the plants in case of the microbial bio remediation what happens is that we are using the microbes in order to clean the environment the next one is the enzymatic bio remediation in this the remediation of the pollutants is actually by the enzymes that are secreted by the organisms and the main enzymes that are being used are the first one is the oxidoreductase then we have lysis the third one is peroxidase the fourth one is hydrolase and, and the fifth one is the dehalogenase so this was all about the bio remediation and the phyto remediation in detail i hope this video was helpful for you and if you like this video please do like share it with your friends and please subscribe to my channel and also i'll be coming up very soon with more informative videos as well so thank you so much for watching and i'll see you soon bye